Hello everyone, uh, this is Paul from the APN Academy and in today's video we are going to be speaking about how you can do swing trading using price action. You know if you've been following our channel, we are pure price action traders using our market structure, right? So uh, this is one of the videos you guys requested us to do and uh, today we're bringing it to you guys. I hope you guys stick to it until the end because we really have something that we're going to show you that would change your trading. Now, what are we going to be speaking about in this video today? We're going to be looking at uh, what exactly swing trading is because most people tend not to understand it. And also, we're going to be speaking about the time frames you're going to be using in case you want to do swing trading. And then which structures do you need to look out for so that your swing trading can stand out? Then lastly, why I'm requesting you guys to stick until the end is the psychology of swing trading. Most people do not get this. People think swing trading, as long as I can hold a trade for a few days, I'm doing swing trading. Yes, uh, according to the definition, but what about psychologically? Can you understand that? Do you get uh, how you can get to that point? Are we together? So that's what we're going to be speaking about. Make sure you stick to it. In case you want to do swing trading, you need to understand this last part we're going to be looking at in this video. So without wasting time, let's just get into the video. But before I get there, uh, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Uh, or if it's your first time coming across uh, this channel, particularly on this video here, make sure you subscribe. Uh, click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss because we produce such video with such value every week, right? So without wasting time, let's get into it. Now let's first start with defining what swing trading is. Uh, <clears throat> swing trading is when you take is simply when you take a trade uh, that could last a few days or a few weeks. Now some of the swing trades will last a few days simply because fundamental factors have pushed them quickly. Some of them will last a few weeks because maybe they've been slow. Uh, they, there was no fundamentals to push them. Or really the market has been having uh, very many phases of uh, ranges, right? You know, the market has three phases. Uh, the market has uh, three phases whereby the market is progressing. Then it will reach somewhere and will start ranging and then it progresses again. So we have progress, ranging, progress, right? And then also here we have what we call distribution. Then down here we have what we call accumulation. This one will be for another video. In case you do not understand it, we shall make a whole video about uh, market phases. But that's how the market moves. So this is what we mean by swing trading. What are the, the time frames that you, you need to understand or you need to know to use when you want to get into swing trading? But before we get into the time frames, now, what could make someone uh, decide to choose to do swing trading? Simply because of our business schedules. Most of us, me particularly, talking on my behalf, I didn't get into trading when I didn't have what I was doing. I got into trading when I was doing something else. So uh, trading was like uh, a side gig or something I was doing on the side before I took it uh, full time. Because personally, I'm a full time trader and most people at Epin Academy are full time uh, traders. So before I got to become a full time trader, uh, I was doing something else. Now, swing trading is very good in that aspect because the role I had was very, very demanding and very uh, my the, my schedules were really very busy. So I had limited time to look at the charts. Now, if you're in that situation or position, this is the best time of type of trading. But also, even if you're not in this uh, situation here, you can decide to uh, do swing trading because it has its advantages. One, um, you're not going to have to look up at the charts. And also, you're using uh, less risk to look at a bigger reward right you even if you have limited capital you can use less risk so that you can look at bigger uh, uh distances that the price could cover bigger distances meaning many pips that you can be able to uh, get right but before you before you get to that level you need to understand certain aspects and one of the aspects that you need to understand are the time frames that you, you that you need to use now swing trading time frames are as follows the first one is monthly what, now, what's the importance of this monthly time frame? Let me just change this color to red. What's the importance of this monthly time frame? Uh, let me just remove this. The importance of this monthly time frame is to give us direction. This one I've been mentioning it in all the videos that have uh, time frames. In case uh, you don't understand the importance of using time frames, just check uh, in the cards on the top uh, right corner. Uh, all the I will attach the videos there so that you can be able to watch them and understand them in detail. Monthly gives us the direction. Now, why is direction important when you're trading? Even if you're not a swing tra trader or you're an intraday trader or scalper, you need to be able to get direction. For example, you cannot just wake up and you leave your house without where you're going in a normal circumstance. Of course, some people may not be in, uh, in a normal situation or they may be having emotional issues, but uh, as long as you're, you're in a normal state, you cannot just wake up uh, and drive off and then you're going nowhere. 
right? At least you're going either to the store, you're going to, to, to pick up something, you're going to visit someone, you're going to the gym, you're going to pick food, or you're going to ETC, right? So direction is very important. The same applies to trading. You need to first get direction. And direction, when you're doing swing trading, is gotten from monthly. Now, after getting direction, what do you want? We need to get our structure that we are going to trade. Please, I always say this, and this is the same example I keep giving. You cannot build a house that you want without a foundation. You cannot say, I want a house with eight bedrooms, uh, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, without a foundation. The foundation, the architecture, or the architect, I don't know how the, which one is right, architecture or architect. That person has to give you a plan that suits what you want. That plan is later given to the, to the engineer, civil engineer, I think, who will later be responsible to direct or to supervise the construction of that house according to that drawing or the plan that was given to you. Now, on that plan, we have what we call a foundation. Your wants, your plan, your building has that plan and it should be followed. Are we together? So this, this weekly gives us the structure that you're going to trade. The structure simply is the reason for example, you cannot say that I'm going to buy this trade without a reason. You cannot say I want a flat, I want two-story building without a plan of two-story. That's why you see buildings collapsing. Buildings collapse because the foundation is supposed to hold uh, two levels and you people are putting on it eight levels. Another example I can give you is you've seen cars overturning. When you, those cars are being manufactured, they can tell you that this car can is, is supposed to be carrying only, especially cars that carry loads. This car is supposed to be carrying loads, uh, maybe not exceeding 15 tons. And then you find some people are overloading the car and making it carry 30 tons. That's why you see a car will be moving and it overturns or maybe tires uh, um, going off. Maybe it's, uh, it's, it's not moving well. The speed is that bad. The spare parts are, are, are getting spoiled before the time that they're supposed to be waiting to, right? Then what is our entry time frame? Our entry time frame is going to be H4. Now, in the previous videos, uh, I did explain this aspect of time frame. Now, I'm also going to re-explain here. As usual, you know, we start with theory, make you understand before you go to the practical. So someone may be wondering, why are you just talking about showing us the charts? I want to first make you understand so that when we go to the charts, you're not lost, right? So coming to H4, H4 is the time frame we use for entry. Now, if you want to refine, because we have to get better entries. Now, if you want to refine, you have to use H1. Now, I want to explain these two. Why do you use H1? Now, I've seen very many uh, traders whereby they, they're talking of swinging. You cannot say that you're going to swing. Remember, according to a definition we have said, swinging we are holding for a few days or a few weeks. Now, you can't tell me that you're going to hold a trade for a few days or a few weeks and you're refining till minute one. You are going to get a good entry for a short time. When you're refining, the worst that you should go to is minute 30. The worst for a long-term trade. Otherwise, personally, I do suggest you refine up to minute H1. Sorry, The entry time frame is H4, right? Why H4 and why do we refine up to H1? Let me give you an example. You're holding for days, a few days or a few weeks. Now, if you want to hold for days, it means that you're going to have several H4 candles. Now, if you're to take your real entry in H1 or less, it means that there, there is a higher chance that you're going to enter when the market is still in a noisy place. I've just mentioned to you that the market has phases. You may enter the market and it frustrates you when it's still in accumulation phase. Accumulation is before the market starts moving up or when it's starting to, to drop. It is in a phase what we, in a phase we call distribution, right? Now distribution is before the market starts doing a sell-off, or you may enter in this phase in the middle when the market is ranging, and then you get trapped and you get frustrated. The market likes doing that, so if you a, a, a swing trader or you want to become a swing trader, you have to make sure you enter using H4. H4 filters out all the noise. I will give you guys the best example. Uh, marking lower highs and lower lows, which is one of the most important things in trading. In case you don't understand it, I'm also going to attach the video there. We have a whole video on how you can mark the highs and lows, right? Just look uh, in the cards that is attached on the uh, on the top uh, right corner. So if you're marking higher the highs and lows in H1, there's usually going to be a lot of noise, but th that noise can be sieved out in H4. 
right? So meaning a person who is looking at holding a trade for some time doesn't need that noise because remember you have a schedule. You're not going to always be looking at the phone like a scalper one intraday, right? You can even take a day or days depending on how the, 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 the pips that you're targeting or the distance that you expect your trade to cover. Are we together? So these are the time frames that you have to use as a swing trader. We are going to illustrate them uh, 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 well on the charts, right? I hope you guys are following. So in case you're lost on anything, you can just comment below. We, we usually look through all the comments because we use your comments to uh, make for you videos that uh, can improve your trading. That's why we keep saying that in case you want any topic that is disturbing you and you want a video on it, so that we can explain it in detail. You can comment in the, you can put it in the comment section. We shall be able to get it for you. So even right now, if you're having any issues, make sure you put it below in the comment section. We shall be able to get back to you. Or even we can make a whole video about it as long as you turn on the notification bell and you do not miss it. So uh, these are the timeframes that we do use. I hope you've understood as to why. Monthly direction, weekly the structure, reason as to why you're taking the trade. Is it a buy or sell? What structure are you looking for? Now, Having spoken about the timeframes, let's now talk about the structures you're supposed to be looking out for. The first one is the trending market. By trading market, I do mean the market is making a high, low, and it makes a high. So as now a swinger can take this reversal because here you're looking for very many pips. There are very many pips. But intraday, I do not advise. I mentioned it in the video of intraday. We, I, we do not advise you take these reversals, but a swinger can take this reversal because remember we have said you're getting the structure from weekly. So if the weekly has made a high, low, higher high. So this is a weekly time frame that if a swinger can look for a trade here, come down in H4. And usually there are very many pips and also it takes a longer time. They can take days or even weeks itself to, to return here. Are we together? So... This is one, a trading market. Or if it, even if it is trending down lower low, lower high, lower low. When the market makes this low, even the, the retest here, someone can take it. Or the, when the market comes back here, you can take the continuation. The same applies there, you can take a continuation. So this is what we mean by the structure of a trending market that you can use, right? So the second type is the impulsive markets. Now, by impulsive or aggressive markets, we do here in this, in this situation, what do we use? We use... At the knowledge of Fibonacci. So if there's an impulsive uh, movement in the market, we do expect a retracement to, to the Fibonacci retracement levels. We have a video on that. Still, you can check it in the cards, the top right corner, and then you expect a push up. You either expect impulse retracement double top or you expect impulse retracement lower high or impulse retracement higher high. These are the outcomes of the impulsive moves. Then we also look at shapes. We have shapes like the head and shoulders. We have a video on that. And then we have shapes like M's. We have shapes like W's. We have uh, we have these shapes here. You can use them, right? Also, we have types uh, of M's and W's. Detailed explained there. Then also you can look at patterns. Now, someone may be saying, why aren't you mentioning trend lines? Now, trend lines, I normally categorize them as those that uh, it's what forms patterns, right? A pattern is just, two trend lines put together, it creates a pattern or forms a pattern. Uh, and then or if you use only one trend line, that becomes only trend line. So you can also use that as long as you, you're using the correct time frames. So these are the structures that you need to look out for as a swinger. But in which time frame are you looking them out for? You're looking for them in weekly. Remember we have said weekly gives you the structure you're going to trade. It is giving you the reason for trading, right? Monthly gives you the direction. H4 gives you the entry and you can refine in, um, in, in H1. I, I suggest you stop there, but if you want to get, if people like sniper entries, you can go further to minute 30. Are we together? So uh, that's that's it for the structures that you need to look out for as uh, uh, a swinger, in case you want to be a swinger. Now, this is the last part in case you've been watching up to this point. Now, this is the part that is very, very, very crucial. Are we together? Now, most traders do not understand how these things appear. Now, I've taken an example. I'm making this video on the third week. This this, this is the, the current gold candle in monthly, right? If you're watching this video today, this today, October, today is October 22nd. This is how the monthly candle looks like. And this is how the weekly candles look like. If you go to the weekly chart, the current, this is how this month looks like of October. This is how the current weekly structure looks like of the month, this month, ever since October started. Then when you go down to daily, this is how it looks like. There are 15 candles so far because we are left with only 
one week to end. And you know, when you're trading normal markets, we trade from uh, Monday to uh, to Friday. While if you're trading synthetics, we trade uh, Monday to Monday. It means that it's 24-7. In case you want to start practicing on synthetics, make sure you get yourself a demo account. I will leave the link in the description, right? So now, what is very important about this? If monthly is is stating that this is what is happening, this is how it's happening. Now, it's very hard for you to determine what you're going to trade. That's why you've had the saying that big time frames are not for taking trades. Now, you cannot take a trade because of this, but this time frame here can help you get what to do. For example, if monthly you are at a level of, let's say, support and the market came here and was rejected, when the market came, came back to this area, it was rejected. And now currently the market is, let's say, this candle is done you're seeing down here. It's telling you that there's indecision. Indecision means that there's a fight between buyers and sellers, right? So the winner will be done to take the direction. If sellers become stronger, they'll break. If buyers say, no, you can't take us out of the market, they'll reject from this area. Now, how do you break down this? How do you break it down? Now, when you go down to weekly, now weekly, remember we have said we're at support. I'm just giving an example. Rejection here, rejection here. Let me just change the color uh, to, to blue. If this was a rejection, rejection. Now, currently we are here. We have said that there's indecision. This is what it, the indecision we are seeing on monthly. But we had support. So if you had support, what's the direction? The direction is most likely to push up. Support we're expecting buys. Now, when you come to weekly, weekly we're having such a structure. The market came down, then went up with this green candle. Green on my side means up going up buy candle red means a sell candle but the color doesn't matter you can use any color of your choice so the market came down went up this is a turning point then again the, with this red color the market came down the market came down like this then with this green candle currently the current week today is a friday the current week uh the mark the market is showing us that we are we're having a, a rejection like this right it means that we have a lower low lower high lower low now we are currently into this lower high here are we together this is the connection right now what does how do they connect with these two it this two connect in a way that since we are all at support 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 now we are here this is just an example i'm not saying it's what is happening on the chart but of course the candles i got them from the chart now for us to 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 be able to be bullish to align with this monthly, we need this weekly to give us a bullish structure. For example, this is still a bearish structure. The market is making lower low, lower high, lower low. What do we want? We want the market to break above, come to this lower low, either and create for us inverse head and shoulder and break up, or for it to create for us a W by breaking up here, right? Retesting on the neck and then if we can create this W, remember we've said one shapes in weekly, right? So currently, let me just repeat. Currently, this market is, it came down lower low, lower high, lower low. Now, currently, this is the weekly candle is showing us that the market has come back here. This is, the market came down lower low, went up lower low, I think, broke down, then it's currently testing this area here. You will, you will see that it's evident in daily. Now, when you come down to daily, you clearly see the market went up, came down, went up, came down, created this M here. This is a, a, the third type of, the second type of M that we speak about. And then came back and retested this neck and then made a low. Currently, we are seeing a market that is here. It's attempting to create a W. Are you getting it? Like we've said that these three time frames have to be communicating the same thing. Monthly is giving you direction. It's telling you that it is, we're supposed to be looking for buys. If monthly says we're supposed to be looking for buys, it means weekly should give me a buying structure. Also, daily should give me a structure that is uh, connect, coordinating with these other two. But now, the tricky part is not all of them sometimes are going to be communicating the same that's why they say patience is important in trading now it is up to you to wait for them to communicate the same thing for example i told you right now weekly is like this lower low lower high lower low and currently the, the price is here while daily is showing you that we have an m that was retested right we made a low we made a low it was this m was retested right we made a low this low here then currently we are here are you seeing so if daily can break above, come back, maybe create inverse head and shoulders and break above, it means that also by that time, weekly could have created a W. Are you seeing it? Then as a trader, you can take the trade to retest the neckline because we have said that uh, as a swinger, when the market makes a W, this distance to retest here is enough for you to make your pips, right? So it will be, that means that these three timeframes will be aligning. I don't know if it makes sense.
So this is how you communicate, you connect the three time frames, and they have to be communicating, right? Now, for a swinger, you may either decide to look at daily or not, because the important structure you want is done in weekly, the structure given to us in weekly, because we're looking at longer distances. Now, personally, if you to ask me, I would advise that you look at daily, just to see uh, where are you, because the market may create a W, but along the way here, the market has created uh either resistance or support, or maybe what you guys call an order block somewhere that is hindering the market from doing what you want. So you just check and you do nothing with it, but you just check and see, is there any obstacle that could, obst or, uh, could obstruct my movement, either up or down, according to the structure that I want to trade? So this is the psychology that I wanted you guys to understand. You can use it even for other types of trading, whether scalping or swinging, depending on the time frames you've chosen. But I just wanted to make you guys understand how to connect these time frames. I do hope it makes sense to you guys. Now, let's try to go to the charts and we try to do these things practically. We try to identify uh, monthly, weekly. We see how we can connect them and how we can take the trade using the H4, right? Okay, so uh, this is CAD CHF. I would like us to implement uh, whatever we have spoken about uh, when we're doing the theory part. We're going to implement everything so that you see how you can actually do it in uh, practice. Now, I'm going to do on uh, what has has uh, recently happened on CAD CHF. I'm not going to go back into history. So when you look at uh, CAD CHF in monthly, we have this type of M here, this type of M, which is this other type of M that we talked about with uh, a lower high. This is a lower high. So we said that after an M is created, we want the market to come back and test the neckline. Now, remember, we said monthly gives us direction. All right, together. We said monthly gives us direction. In case you don't remember very well, you can just uh, re rewind the video and go back to that part. Now, meaning, what does it mean? It means that the direction is up. Remember, we said monthly is for direction once again. So here we expect the market to give us a, an upward movement, movement. Why? Because we, we are at a support level. Why is this support? Because at this point, the market was rejected up, came back, was rejected up. Now, currently, we're in this same area. And also, we have an M, meaning we, we have to push the market up. Not we have to, but the higher chances the market will get pushed up. So monthly is giving us a direction of uh, upward movement. Now, when you drop down to weekly, which is supposed to give us the structure, remember we said we need them to align. So this is the type, this is the same area that we're talking about that when it's level of support. Are you seeing? It's exactly where the price is. The market came, it was pushed up, came back in the, into this area, it was pushed up, came back into this area. So now this is the third time it's coming back here. So the higher chances we also expect to push up, which, which means that it's aligning with the, with monthly. Now, another aspect to show that we're aligning with monthly is this. We have a market creating a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. So after you know that this is a trending market that we talked about. So in the market, we need the market to come back and test this previous low, right? So meaning weekly and monthly are communicating the same thing. So weekly is giving us a structure, a bullish structure. Now, this is the aspect we talked about. You can straight jump into H4 from here. But like I said, you, it won't hurt you to just check daily because you don't want to enter a market that is still in a bearish market because daily may still be bearish while this one is showing us that we're supposed to be looking for longs. And you don't want to look for a long in a bearish market. So let's just check daily. It won't hurt us. So I'll, I'll just check daily. Now you can clearly see daily. We have a minor M here. There's a neckline area here. So I would not want to get involved here until the market takes out this this, when the market will break above this area here and on the retest, that's when I'll be interested in taking the trade. Now, there's one thing that uh, you need to keep in mind. Let's just go back to weekly a bit. Let's get our target because we're trading using our structure in weekly. So which, which neckline do you want us to test in weekly? We, we have a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. So we need the market to come back and test this area. You can either use a slab, right? Or you can use, uh, you can use a slab or you can use... Um, a, a, a horizontal depending on how you want to do it right so i'm just going to use a slab now i'll go back now now we shall go to our entry time frame which is h4 so now remember we have said that we do not want to take this trade we're not interested actually in this trade until it takes out this blue area that we marked hope you guys recall we marked this in daily because it was a neckline of an m in daily so uh, i'm just going to play we're not interested here you stay away from the market until it breaks above. Now, this is the first time actually when this market breaks above here. Now, remember the rules of breakouts. Now, some people are going to come and take the trade from here, which I do not say it is wrong, right? 
But this is not the way that for us we do trade. What we want, once say a weekly test there, we don't care whether the market continues up, it's okay. It's okay to miss out on trades. But as long as you followed your rules. Now, we are very strict on rules because we are rule-based traders, right? So let's see if the market will give us a weekly test onto this area. So we have a break of our area that we wanted to take a trade from. That is one qualification. The second qualification is we need a weekly test because this is a strong momentum. You can clearly see small candle got bigger, got even bigger. So momentum is in our favor. Now, what do we want? A weekly test. So uh, I will just go slowly. Now, you can clearly see the market kept going. So we're not interested in that. And as a trader, do not panic. Just follow your rules, right? So let's see if the market continues up or we shall miss out on the trade. Will it hit our target? Because our target is here. Will it hit our target before we take the trade? If it does, we're not interested. We remove it from. We shall look for another pair to, to, to use. So let's see. The market actually comes back, right? So um, you can clearly see the momentum is weakening. Buyers, it means that buyers are still strong. So the market comes back, but we want it to come back into this area, right? So let's see. Let's also watch the momentum. Aha, uh -huh, that is good, the momentum. Let's watch the momentum. So the market, this is the first time the market touched this blue line and was rejected, are you seeing? Why? Because this area has a neckline and was broken above, so it has come back. And aren't you guys to observe the momentum? The momentum is very, very weak. Are you seeing this? Look at the number of buy candles and look at this, how long it took for it to reach to equate these candles. It means that the momentum is uh, weak downwards, meaning sellers are not strong. So the higher chance we are going to continue back up. So now, this is the first time that we're here. Now, what do we want? We want the market to create for us a structure we're going to base on this lower time frame. Then we can refine it in case, right? So as long as we stay above here, we're going to be looking for buys, right? So uh, the market doesn't give us a structure. Let's see. Now, this is when the market gives us a, dub, a double bottom. This first bottom and then a second bottom because the market didn't continue down. Now it was pushed up and we have broken this neckline area here. here. Now here, as a trader, you, you want either to take a trade immediately from here and then your stop loss is just below this structure here, here, or like we mentioned, sorry, our target is here. Of course, we want a one to three minimum. Now, that is one. You could just take it from here. And then, or secondly, you would want to refine it into H1. Remember, we mentioned that you can also refine a trade in H1 to get a better trade. Now, if someone was to refine this trade in H1, actually, your entry would be here because the market came and broke this low and then broke above and retested it when it came back here. So it's up to you. Let's try to see uh, here. Of course, the stop loss is going to remain the same. Let me see if we're to use H1. Um, our stop loss is just going to be below this structure here. It's going to remain the same, actually. The stop loss is going to be the same. I'll just adjust it here. So of course, we also want a one, two, three for this one here. We want a one, two, three. So we shall just leave it there. Also, this one we have uh, we want a one to three for it there. So I will just extend these. Sorry, one to three is enough here. One to three. So I will just extend this because there's a swing. There are higher chances the trade could take several days or even weeks, right? So let's see uh, how the trade goes. So I'm just going to play. I want you guys to see how it plays along. Remember, if we hit stop loss, it is okay. You can take the trade again if the, your rule, the entry rules are met, but do not keep uh, forcing trades and revenging. Set your, all your rules at the beginning and then leave the trade to play. Remember, this is swinging. You're just using proper risk and you're not risking a lot. Swingers don't risk a lot, but you can see that the target that you're looking at. These are, this is a very big target, right? So let's see how it plays out. All right. Okay, we almost hit our first our target. Then came back down. So we hit that first target of the first trade. So let's see for the second trade that we are still having. It comes back. All right. Almost took us out. Let's see. So we'll just, okay, it didn't take us out. We're still in the trade. Let's see how it plays out. Do not panic. Remember, you're risking only 1%. So even if it misbehaves, you know that uh, 
you you in the next trade when you win the the three percent you you still have your two percent up into profits right so do not always panic never panic just follow your rules right so uh, also in this case you can keep uh, journaling uh, the the reason as to why you've taken the trade for example in this reason we had in this trade year we had an M in monthly we we expect a retest to the neckline right and then also we had the lower a lower low that was broken. Uh, and we expected the month, the, the weekly to, to, to go and retest. So uh, we had this trade hitting our tech profit. But now I just want to show you guys uh, something. We have hit tech profit of the two trades. Uh, the first trade was this one, and then the second one is this one. Now I would like to show you guys something of what exactly swing trading means. We defined it that it, you can uh, take trades and you hold for a few days or uh, even weeks. Now just let me put period separators and you'll see. Now this is H1, it means that each period separator, the, this distance here between these two dotted lines, vertical lines, means a day. So let's count how many days it took us to hit this, this take profit. Now, this first one took us one, two days, right? We said a few days or weeks or even several days or several weeks. So this is the first one took us two days. Now, what about this last trade? It took us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, remember, this is CAD CHF's currency. The, the week lasts five days, meaning it took you two weeks to hit this target. Okay, it's noticing. And this is the original trade. If we also to extend this, because our target was this blue line, but we put it slightly be below because sometimes the market maker may uh, may not reach these levels here because they know most of you are waiting there. That's why you see, for this case, touched and then rejected, right? But always put your stop loss slightly below, right? Or unless if, so, if your risk ratio is not coming and you can put there and then you keep monitoring or managing your trade as, as, as it is moving. So uh, this is how you do swing trading. I hope you guys really got value out of it. In case you have a business schedule, but you really want to get into this trading uh, business, uh, make sure you start with swing trading. And swing trading, if you start with swing trading, the other types of trading will be very easy for you. Uh, intraday will be easy. Scalping will be very easy for you. So in case you got value out of this video, do not forget to give us that uh, likes button. All right. And also if it was your first time coming out uh, across our, our channel and particularly this video, we do make such videos every week, once, twice, or even three times so that it can help you in your uh, trading journey. So do not forget to click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you do not miss. Have a great day.